Hi guys, a big problem for Iceland because the most population lives on the Reykjanes Peninsula. About 270,000 people out of 377,000 people as a whole in Iceland. So the Reykjanes Peninsula has woken up from an 800 year sleep and now the volcanic systems on that peninsula are rumbling and preparing for more eruptions. We've seen eruptions of Fagradalsfjall the last three years and now Grindavik. These eruptions, the magma intrusion on November 10th, the eruption on December 18th, and then the eruption um, in January 14th that destroyed three homes in Grindavik. And now they're saying more eruptions are likely inside the town of Grindavik, inside the Swartzengi area with the Blue Lagoon. And now we've seen larger earthquakes in the Bluffjöll area that is at the doorsteps of Reykjavik. And these areas have proven in the past, some 800 years ago, that lava did flow into the capital area. So critical infrastructure is under threat for the capital area as well. And we have already seen that when the T small eruption, we have to say, not a large lava flow, did happen in Grindavik. It created a 300 meter wide lava field that was flowing over critical infrastructure, hot wire pipes coming from Swartzengi that create heat and hot water for Grindavik, over the electricity line, so the electricity went out. And also Grindavik doesn't have fresh water, cold water right now, so the sewer system does not work. If that happens to the capital of Iceland, this is a disaster. So Thorwald or Thorwaldsen, um, a volcanologist, he is of the opinion that they need to consider protection measurements for the capital area and for all critical infrastructure on the Reykjanes Peninsula and also what he's saying and that's a problem for the capital area for the expansion and development of the capital area he thinks it's not advisable to build further east if they have other options and because he says he doesn't think that there is going to be an eruption inside of Reykjavik but a lava flow that could reach the capital area and also critical infrastructure. And he says, this is just proven that settlements such as like Gardabea and Hafnafjordur could be reached because the lava has flown there. So he thinks preventative measurements and considerations are very, very important. And that would be the first step um, would be a risk assessment in regards to the craters that are there in Heidmark, Krizovic, and in Blafjöl. And Blafjöl is quite active right now. So he's of the opinion that magma is accumulating underneath that area. So they want to build another airport on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And that's why he keeps saying that the plant location is in Hasarauni. And that's, he says, it's not a good choice. That's in the middle between the Keflavik International Airport and the Reykjavik City Airport. So they want to move the Reykjavik City Airport to that area. But, you know, is that wise to build this on a peninsula that is going to be active like crazy in the near future? Um, so he says they need to look for alternatives where they could build that international airport. And that's a reasonable consideration, he's saying. He says, it's very important for us to start thinking about what happens in different eruptions, in different volcanic systems, and how we can respond to these eruptions and what an impact that will have on our daily life. And uh, also when we get lava flows over water pipes, electricity poles, it can go to power plants. And what happens if these eruptions and lava flows destroy a power plant? What's the plan B? Iceland is a very cold country and they recently just had a 20 minutes 
power outage in Reykjavik and it created quite the chaos. The traffic lights didn't work. It was snowing. Um, accidents happened. So this is not a good scenario because they don't have a backup system like let's switch to gas. They can't. They would have to bring in diesel generators from out of country and that takes a while. You know, you can't have people freeze in their homes. So I think he's absolutely right with what he is saying. And um, they were aware the Minister of Transport has already talked about this issue in 2022 when everything already became active with the Fagrat Alsfjall. And uh, so he says that experts have stated that the Reykjanes Peninsula is entering a volcanically active Phase, which could mean regular eruptions over the coming decades or even centuries. And the, at that time, both the prime minister and the transport minister have stated that this activity is a consideration when planning the construction of infrastructure such as airports. So I'm wondering why weren't they better prepared when things happened in Grindavik? That's a little bit of a question. The Minister of Transport has already said in 2022, um, I think that even if one is not a geologist or expert, it is quite clear from the way people have talked about it that we need to prepare for a new reality and that we're going to see earthquakes or seismic activity or something like that for a longer period of time on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And he says that simply reduces the likelihood that development in this area is considered likely. Um, so hmm, that was 2022, right? Um, and then they asked him, I said, well, will then the Reykjavik airport remain where it is? Or what's the plan for the long term? And then they said, well, in any case, it would already take 15 to 20 years to build an alternative airport at the Hasaraun location where they want to do it um, now. Um, 15 to 20 years, yeah. Um, so they are considering areas like Borgarnes, West Iceland, Selfoss, South Iceland. That has been discussed as potential locations for international airports because tourism is basically one of their largest incomes for the country of Iceland. So I think they have to consider these sites for the future because starting to build something on the Reykjanes Peninsula right now, that would probably be a waste of money. And it's always good to have an alternative in a safer area should something really go wrong badly there, right? And in that context, uh, Thorwald or Thorwaldson has made an interesting statement. So he says that... The volcanic belt that has manifested itself near Grindavik right now basically stretches from Reykjanes to Hengli. And he says that on this belt, there are six to seven places that are a little bit different and that erupt differently. Um, and he says the eruption period could be between 300 and 400 years, guys. So but each eruption has variations in timing and he says the examples that they see from the past they prove that definitely volcanic eruptions will be reg a regular thing on the Reykjanes Peninsula during that three to four hundred year active season and he says during that season it is very difficult to predict the ex exact timing when these eruptions will take place but he says in general however it can be said that in each place these eruptions will last for 10 to 20 years so he says six places six volcanic systems and if they wake up on each system it will last for 10 to 20 years and then they will move around every 30 to 50 years and so We've heard a few days ago that they basically cannot say if Grindavik will be safe again or 
can fully assess Grindavik after that rumbling and eruption thing will have stopped on Grindavik. And they gave a timeline saying 10 years, but basically it could be 10 to 20 years or even longer. And um, he says that many scientists agree on this scenario, um, although there may be some disagreements about the timing, but it gives quite a good overview of what is going on there. And in light of this, you know, right now it is pretty clear to everyone that they most likely will have to move the whole town. So people are moving away. They need to find new places for these people. And now good advice is expensive. Where should all these people live? Should they build new settlements on the Reykjanes Peninsula? I mean, you have to think most people work in these areas. That's where they are tied to. That's where the industry is. But as he said, um, he wouldn't advise to build further east. So where to build? That's the big question, because does it really make sense to keep building on the Reykjanes Peninsula? But on the other hand, that's the best place to build things because it is more flat than the other areas. And that's why most settlements are there. It's basically like 270,000 people out of 377,000 people that Iceland has as a whole are on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So this can be devastating for whole Iceland, for Iceland as a whole, because we know other settlements, they're right on the coast and they have large mountains behind them. And that's why there's an avalanche risk for other towns in Iceland. And only 22% of whole Iceland can are inhabitable. So this is a huge problem. So it is kind of scary to me, guys. Um, I wanted to give you this update and thank you so much for watching guys thank you so much for the supers you keep sending me and for the coffee you keep buying me on buymeacoffee.com i'm i'm very very grateful um and yeah guys check out the two videos in the end screen and i hope that i'll see you very very soon in one of my other videos bye bye